I'm Ramsey the loud one. I'm Jesse the short one. Put, Put us, us both, both into one. We are. Lots of noise, always too fast. Lots of laughs. Here's our podcast, the loud and short of it. Hi, and welcome to the loud and short of it. I'm Ramsey the loud one, and I'm Jesse the short one. We have for you a monthly movie review, the first of 2021. Mm-hmm. We'll be jumping back in time, though, and reviewing at least one movie from 2020. Yes, yes. Yeah. You got all those Christmas movies that came out that we all saw in theaters, right? <laughs> Don't make right? him cry. Don't make him cry. Don't make him cry in the beginning. Uh, this month, we're doing Wonder Woman 1984 mm-hmm. and Soul. Yes. Two movies very similar, Two I'd movies say. that also both came out in theaters, but also at home. That's true, yeah. I watched both of these from my couch, and uh, I got to be honest, the, the happiest I've been. I don't know. There's, no. I know I, I should want to go back to the movies, but the second I watched a superhero movie from home, I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty no, good. I saw Wonder Woman in theaters and Soul at home. Which, if like, I would much rather I, I would I would have rather seen Soul at, in theaters just so I could like have to hold back my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get into it, but I would also like to flip which ones I saw in theaters, <laughs> which ones I saw at home. Uh, okay. What do you want to start with? Oh, uh, Wonder Woman. I start. With I Woman. I got I got to start with Wonder Woman. Okay, okay. You wanna... Well, uh, let's let's just get into the numbers game. Okay. Uh, 1984. That's the name of this movie. Okay. Those are the numbers. 1,984 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. You got a 60 from the critics. 60 <laughs> out of 100. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got a 73 from the audience. Yeah. The, okay. Just for, keep going. For mine, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the critics score and then just take one number away. <laughs> It'll be a 6 or a 0. I'll give it a 6. I'll give it a fucking 6%. <laughs> My God, did this movie fucking suck? I uh, I concur, but I'm, I don't know. I can't remember what the lowest score I've given a movie, but I'm giving it a thirty percent for one one reason, mm-hmm. and we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll explain my six percent. I promise. Okay. Uh, it grossed one hundred forty two million worldwide so far, Jesus. with an opening box office of sixteen point seven. You got to keep all in mind with all of these numbers that yeah. is is COVID. People watch these at home on their Disney Plus. So what well, what did they well, HBO, the D- Max. HBO Max yeah. or Disney Plus, depending on which movie? Yeah. Um. So. So doesn't take into account for what was probably a subscriber boost. Yeah. Uh, from Wonder Woman eighty four. You also have to wonder: Is there really a subscriber boost? Is anybody? Did anybody not have Disney Plus and they were like, "We'll have to see Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four." I'd say a lot of people didn't have HBO Max. That's fair. Yeah, with Disney yeah. Plus, it probably. I feel like everyone has Disney. If you don't have it, like, don't give Disney <laughs> like money. But also, it's so cheap, it's not even like a yeah. real thing right now. Every time, yeah. every time I get the fucking bill for Disney Plus, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll probably rewatch Mandalorian next month. I never do. <laughs> <laughs> I had it for free for one year when it ran out. I was like, I bet I can find somebody to steal it from, <laughs> and I have. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's budget two hundred million. So it didn't even make its budget back. <laughs> Where'd that budget go? I, the budget went into making this movie. This movie's two and a half hours long. Yeah. It's, you have no right to be two and a half hours long if you're about you're superheroes. I not know you're to call yourself a superhero movie at that point. Unless no. it's the end of an era. You can, like when, when Thanos showed up, I was like, okay, make yeah. it three hours. Also, sure. like, Thanos, like, yeah, this guy takes three hours to take down. Like, fucking the Wishmaster? No, <laughs> you don't get two and a half hours of my time to fucking take him down. Just punch him. Okay, uh, so I handled the fun facts for Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Ramsey will handle it for Soul. Uh, so here's my fun facts, my list of ten that I have. One, I Googled fun facts for a long time and couldn't find any. But the the most interesting fact I could find about this dog shit movie is that Chris Pine showed up with a fanny pack and wanted to wear fanny packs because it was the 80s, and they were like, yeah, sure, go for it. And he wore a fanny pack for the whole movie. That was his whole thing. Yeah, it's like, that wasn't scripted. Chris Pine did it, so fun. Why was Chris Pine in this movie? How much did <laughs> they pay him? Like, it's a ma- Probably I, a good portion of the $200 million. If they gave me this movie. script, to, like, a character that's like pretty pretty fucking well-regarded in, in like superhero movies, and they were like, here's here's what's going, you're coming back, and here's how, I'd be like, I'm fucking not going to be in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You need to rewrite this. 
Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's just dive right into this because yeah. we're, we're beating around the bush here. Well, let me go first. Let me explain why I gave mine 30%. Okay. So I watched this movie twice. Well, once and then I, I poked around it the yeah. second time. Uh, the first time I watched this movie, I was just feeling a little silly. Just a little goofy. Yeah. And I got one of those goofy moves. Yeah. And were, I, you, were you hungry? <laughs> yeah, I was starving. Yeah. Hungry was, and a little sleepy. I was I was let me let me put it like this. I was so fucking hungry. I would have done anything for food. I was so fucking hungry. <laughs> and I uh I'm like, all right, it's Christmas de- December twenty sixth. I put on the Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four and the entire time I'm like <laughs> Wonder Woman! Yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! She's back, baby! Diana, go for it! They go through the mall and they do all this stuff. I'm like, oh man, what a fucking ride. And then they go to the fucking they go to the Smithsonian and she's like, and there's a fucking jet we have to get on. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck it! Museum jet! Gassed up! I don't, I don't give a shit! <laughs> Got through the end of that movie. I was like, man, Wonder Woman's really in that movie, man. <laughs> Just... I think if you can match that level of goofy, any movie becomes a 30 out of 100. I was like, I was, the, the 30 is balanced out with the hatred of it. The joy I got. The, the, I didn't realize it was a bad movie until I was in the car. We, we were all talking about it. And they were just like, Jesse was like, wait, how'd you feel about Wonder Woman? I was like, that's okay. That's a Wonder Woman movie. It's okay. Jesse was like, every, Jesse was like uh-oh. And then everyone goes, what? And I was like. What the? F- what is the take here? That I went on the internet like an idiot, just found this fucking smorgasbord of hate, and I rewatched I, uh, it. I went and watched this movie, not goofy, but I went with all of my roommates, um, other than Ramsey, who's just moved out. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we sat we sat down to watch this movie, and and before I get into the reasons why, it hit about the forty five minute mark, and I fucking hate when people talk in movies i specifically go to the draft house i never fucking talk it hit the 45 minutes and i leaned over and just looked at every one of my roommates was like are we gonna keep are we staying i was like i don't (laughs) want to stay and i made eye contact with two of them they were like what the fuck did we get ourselves into (laughs) and then we did that every 30 minutes for the whole movie and at one point I won't be able to pinpoint it but something so incredibly stupid happened that one of my friends just went what the fuck? <laughs> and I, that was the funniest and best part of the movie for me. Was watching somebody else suffer with me. God. Uh, let, let's start off. It, the first yeah. scene is amazing. No, they're, it's not. They're in. It's stupid as fuck. But if the movie, if it had to do with the rest of the movie, it would have been interesting. The reason, the reason I hated the fr- yeah, I agree. <laughs> the first scene went on for like three minutes, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And then fucking, we got like six minutes in, and I was like. Dude, end the race. I was like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's an Olympics taking place when Diana's a little baby. Yeah. And she's winning, but she kind of cheated a little bit. Yeah. So she learned a lesson to not... She, like, loses her horse in the horse race and then wins it by taking shortcuts on foot. Yeah, and then her apparently auntie, is against the rules. Yeah, and then her aunt is aunt is just, like, grabs her and is just like, Diana, you... It's fucking Robin Wright, by the way, in this weird Greek accent. She's like, Diana, you didn't really win. You cheated. And then she looked her, looked her aunt in the eyes like, oh, man, thanks for this advice. It's really going to matter in 120 years. And it didn't even really matter. It had nothing to do with the fucking rest of the movie. Like the the life lesson of yeah. that scene didn't even correlate. It, it was just. It would have been better if like she fucking grabbed her and been like, "Diana, you should have wished you won harder." <laughs> okay, let's. I just. I, I have to get into this. Okay, scene go. by scene. Uh, first moment that you realize that this is just gonna be a fucking terrible movie is there's a scene where Chris Pine has taken over the body of a random individual that did nothing wrong yeah from from the from the grave um zombified him and they're like we gotta play dress up and they do like a fun like they did it in stranger things they do it in lots of movies it was a very marvel thing to be like oh we're gonna take a break from the movie and do fun silly goofy stuff and it's just not funny it's not silly it's not goofy he's trying on like outfits from the 80s that like but they weren't even like so eighties that it was funny. And yeah. Like, oh, the crazy parachute pants. He looks like MC Hammer. It was yeah. just normal. It was like someone who didn't know how to like dress themselves get dressed in the eighties. And I was just like, this is. She she was like, oh, is this too much? She's like, yeah, and it's bad. And I was like, dude, these jokes aren't even fucking like. Was... The last outfit he comes out with is like something someone would wear in twenty twenty. Yeah, nothing it, worn is something that if I saw somebody wearing it, I'd be like, what a fucking weirdo. Yeah, he like, literally he's wearing a fucking members only jacket. They're they're advertising it on Instagram, and I was just like, dude, this is a <laughs> stupid fucking movie. 
And then uh, after that, when, and then it, there's just a lot going on. There's a thousand different plots. Kristen Wiig's doing stuff. She's actually interesting, but never on camera. And then they get on a plane. And this is yeah. the moment when I almost walked out of the fucking theater. Uh, they, they, they're they discussing things. They think the world is about to end. Yeah. And they're like, we have to go to Egypt. We got it. We got to head out right now and head off to Egypt. Yeah. And they're like, how can we do this? We could steal a plane from the Smithsonian. Not even going to get into that. Not even going to get into the fact that they that the plane was fueled <laughs> and just ready on, on runway. runway. We're going to ignore all of that. Or it also the, just has weapons systems. And the fa- yeah, the weapon systems, the fact that he knew how to fly a plane from the 80s when he was from World War II, World War I. Uh, World War I, World yeah. War One. So we're not going to get into any of that. They take off. There's a weird like love scene where he's like, I love planes. And she's like, I love you. And you're like, Okay, I guess. And then they're flying through the air. It's been winter. The entire movie so far has been taking place in winter. And then they are up in the air, flying. They fly through a cloud, and then boom, fireworks everywhere. This is like five minutes of scene of them going through clouds, a couple words, then fireworks everywhere. And then he goes, what are fireworks? Because he's from World War One, And she goes, oh, yeah, it's the 4th of July. <laughs> Diana, bro. I, the first time I watched this movie, you know, I was very hungry. <laughs> was, bro, I remember that fi- the the planes here, the fireworks. I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Go, couple of lovebirds sitting in a plane, cruising along. <laughs> that's pretty nice. And I watched it again, and I was like, wait, what the fuck is going on? It's Fourth of July, and I was like, what? Bring that shit up 30 minutes ago, just offhandedly being like, what are your 4th of July weekends? So, like, anybody in the fucking Smithsonian office, I just, like, you could have just fixed... This is the worst part of the movie for me. You could have fixed it. And another egregious part is, like, later in the movie, Wonder Woman looks cool as fuck. She's just decides she can fly because Steve (laughs) was, like, super horny for flight. And she was just like... If I just channel Steve and lift my arms up, I can fly, which she can't do in Justice League or Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> and I, it leaves me puzzled. <laughs> she, she didn't have the ability during World War One, but she did in 1984, but she lost it by the early 2000s. I just... Why would you make this movie this way and give it to me while I'm not hungry? <laughs> <laughs> To point out, if you haven't watched this movie, just look up the plane scene because it is so long. It's it very just long. keeps going, and then they end up in Egypt. A bunch of shit happens there that I'll let you go over because it's kind of fucking racist. It's pretty racist, it's like super racist. And then the second they're done in Egypt, it just cuts, and they're back in America with no explanation of how they got back. <laughs> they all, the movie's two and a half hours long, yeah. and they jump continents with yeah. no explanation. I honestly don't even get hung up on that shit usually, but I was literally just like, why the fuck did they go to Egypt? And let me tell you why they went to Egypt. So they pull up to Egypt, uh, which also tone deaf. Gal Gadot was in the IDF. She should not be in, in around any Arab children in <laughs> movies. And uh, they go to Egypt, and the main character goes up to this oil baron who's obviously an Arab the main prince. main villain. Yeah, the, and he's just like, yeah, the main villain. He's just like, uh, I wish for me to get all your stuff. And he's like, yeah, I wish that. And he's like, cool, I'm getting all your stuff. And then he's like, now I have an army of bad Arabs. And the, the Arab man's wish was like completely xenophobic. Wanted yeah. to essentially lock out like all the other ethnic people. They built a land. giant rock wall to separate yeah. the ethnicities. It was a, uh, <clears throat> thanks Patty Jenkins. I'll remember <laughs> that. And then uh, there's this big fight where all the, the, the prince's Arab soldiers all work for the main bad guy now. And then. Gal Gadot beats them all up. But Gal Gadot and this white man beat them up. And then Gal Gadot saves these two Arab children in the street. And uh, they were like, oh, thank you. And the entire time I was sitting there, I was like, man, if my dad was watching this shit, he'd beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I got a lot of feelings on that. It's also just like I saw an Arab person. I got hurt. It's my fault. I was like, hell yeah, it's 2020. I was like, we're going to get an Arab character. He's just going gonna, gonna to be the good guy. He's going to be the <laughs> voice. Re- he's a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I, was, I was rooting for you, Patty, and you fucked me. Uh, then I'm just going to jump to the end, because I don't honestly remember what else happened in between the Egypt thing. Because the good scenes What, are... bitch? They went to the White House. What do you mean yeah, you don't remember? That was... Okay, the thing is, there's also, like, not good fighting scenes. There's a there's a car chase scene in Egypt yeah. that was, like, pretty cool. 
and then they and then there's a bunch of stuff that happens, and then there there's a White House fight. Yeah, that wasn't as cool as it could have been. Because Diana doesn't have her powers. Stop taking fucking <laughs> superheroes' powers away from them. Yeah, but it, she it had her s- powers at that point, and wasn't even that cool. Yeah, she but it's, it, that's only cool if they're like if they both have their powers and they're both yeah, going hard. That's fair. I fucking Spider Man Two did it effectively one time, and no one else has. Stop doing it. I'm begging you. Uh, I like the White House scene though, because it's just like when she Cheetah shows up and she's like super powered and whatever. She's doing superpower stuff, mm-hmm. and she's like just turned into a monster immediately. Just fucking hates Diana. She's like, yeah. she's like, now I'm like you, and she's like, no, you're not. You're just fucking mean and weird. I. I feel like Cheetah was the only part of this movie where I'm like, it could have been saved. No. I I feel like if that was written differently and you just got rid of uh, Wishmaker, whatever his name is, and made wish it guy. A, a wish guy, if you made it about Cheetah, it could have been cool. I liked Kristen Wiig's acting. I thought it was nifty. I liked that her hair shifted slowly between scenes. Yeah. She went from frizzled to having straight hair and looking more like a cheetah. Although the, the becoming a cheetah thing was disappointing because it was like oh human 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 oh, human dude. human cheetah <laughs> this like, oh. this boy doesn't even put a label she's literally in the plane with fucking uh max or whatever the fuck maxi lord and he's just like uh he's like wish for anything and he she's like i want to be an apex predator and i was like dude how do you go from like wanting to be like diana like a confident woman to being like i want to become a killing machine like what's the lesson here you get you give women an ounce of confidence they're gonna turn to murderers <laughs> like fucking stop making they stop making movies you're done i also don't want to be a massive nerd and just be like plot hole but uh she's the only character in the entire movie who gets two wishes and his entire thing that like stops him from being able to do stuff is that he's like oh i can only get one wish out of each person dude what is but his she fucking end double. game i can't even remember uh he wanted to be successful this, but why to make his kid happy? All he had to do was make the wish. He he, he literally picks up the stone in the beginning. And he's like, "I want to be you." That was the biggest plot twist of the fucking movie. Mm-hmm. I was literally just like, and "It's like two minutes into it." What? I was <laughs> well, I, it should I, have been two minutes into it, but it was thirty. Yeah, and not like a plot twist in a good way. I was like, Ooh, <laughs> "Oh, okay. <laughs> Where is this gonna go?" And then he just starts bleeding everywhere. Also, does he, he like the whole time? It's like, how does this actually affect him? Because sometimes he's like about to die, and then two seconds later, he's like oh no i'm good again i got health from one guy so now it's okay i don't know okay can i jump to the end now uh yeah go for it okay so the end game for this guy is to be successful which apparently to do this he must steal the wishes of every single person in the entire world to steal their life energy Mm -hmm. which wasn't explained at any point previous to this but so he of it now his wishes can work through television because it's kind of like touch because of radios. Yeah. Which is explained by the President of the United States pointing at a chalkboard and saying, yeah. kind of like touch, right? And then they move on. So anyways, he's doing this. At least they knew America was primed for accepting the President was a fucking idiot. <laughs> Diana shows up, she beats up a cheetah, she gets in there, and Classic. she's about to stop him. And then she breaks all the cameras so that he can't use the radios anymore. But then... Well, what we didn't know about, because we're just idiots watching the movie, we don't know the backstory. There's a massive green beam of energy shooting out of the out of the radio place. Yeah. So all he has to do is walk across the room, which now he has the power of wind. <laughs> yeah. So he can propel wind guy. Wind. He has wind powers. Just at the end, though, that's when he gets the wind powers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he stands in the green the green beam of energy, and that allows him to continue. To control TVs because of the green beam of energy, and, which uh, Diana can't touch him no. and get him out of the green beam of energy because he has the power of wind now. <laughs> I like the uh, uh, two things. One, I, I like the how Cheetah exits the movie because he's like she's holding her underwater and she's like Barbara, don't make me do this. And you're like, what the? F- are you gonna drown her? And I was like, oh fuck yeah. <laughs> and then she like brings some electricity down and like shocks Barbara. And then Barbara just is laying down, breathing fine. And then she goes to fucking Maxi Lord and like crawls her way in there. I don't even remember how she gets to him. She like touches him through it's the whip or whatever. Yeah. And then she's just like, now everyone on earth who's made a wish, everyone across the world, the entire world, everyone's making wishes. Some people are like, I wish this bitch would drop dead. Some people are like, I wish I had a fucking dinosaur. And then Diana's just sitting there and like she's like, I know what's gonna cure everything. I'm going to say 
okay, now everyone just look within yourselves and love yourself and then work harder and you won't you won't want for other things. Oh god. It was the I couldn't even get the fucking words out probably. And, and then, she got and everyone in the world did it. You have to assume. You it's have the only to assume. Way it worked. The only way I there's no way to fucking tie this into the later movies and make it make sense. Also, they've given no backstory to why Max Lord is the way he is. And then at the end, they did. when <laughs> kind of racist. <laughs> no, that's. Not, and then at the yeah. end, when she's giving that speech to everyone in the world, she's also giving that speech to Max Lord, and she's like, "Max Lord, you want to spend time with your kid, not be successful." So Max Lord has a flashback to his dad beating him, and when it first happened, I thought this was a random kid somewhere in the world. And I was like, "Is this gonna be about how she's trying to convince a kid to not wish his abusive father?" To disappear, I was like, this is about to get so dark. <laughs> no, it's just Max Lord's dad hit him, so he decided it'd be okay to kill everybody yeah. and become successful. Some kids, like, make fun of him for eating a tamale at school. It's like, yeah, I gave it. I was also just like, why is this relevant to him becoming evil? <laughs> yes. This is a scary message you're sending. And then uh, Max Lord decides that he wants to be good, and everyone in the world decides they want to be good. And yeah. Max Lord loses his powers, and the rock goes away. And yep. then the next scene is once again Max Lord has somehow left the island of the green orb of broadcasting the systems. Green, the green and beam. He finds his child in DC in a field. In front of the White House. In yeah. The White House. Because he's where... like, oh, my son, how I missed you. And he's like, dad, holy shit. And that's the last you see of Max. Maybe he got away. Who fucking cares? It's. It was so bad yes. from start to finish. Who fucking ca- I'm telling it's you, it's hard man. to review it because it was so bad. Yeah. I don't even like know how to. The I, pacing is terrible. I have that written down. Yeah, I think also uh, the pacing of our review. I, my 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 take on this movie. My final take is that this movie sucks for other reasons, but like, I feel like DC is trying to make kids movies right now, and they suck dick. Shazam sucked dick. Aquaman sucked dick. This movie sucks dick. Harley Quinn was not a kid's movie, but it was kind of a kid's movie because it was just Deadpool. <laughs> and it, it was okay, actually. It was a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, and I didn't hate Shazam that much. I could not stand Shazam. The get-go, so. I fucking... I, the entire, it was just like a kid's movie. My I, take like, I don't care about this is shit. is that I'm going to continue to get my hopes up every single time DC makes a movie and be like, oh, I bet they're going to knock it out of the park. This is going to be the yeah. one. And then it's going to shit itself. That's how I feel. Because Wonder Woman 1, I liked that movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a great movie. I didn't all all the bitching about it. I was like, "It's a superhero movie. Stop bitching. This is just atrocious. This is not a good movie." And it, honestly, it fu- like the only positive I'll give this movie is that <clears throat> it doesn't fuck up Diana's character super bad. Like she's still Wonder Woman. There's not like everything that happens around her is so dumb and useless. But like she's still Wonder Woman. Yeah. I still like if there was another Wonder Woman coming out, I'd be like, "Yeah, no, I'm gonna give it another shot." Yeah, I hope that this director at least recognizes that she horrifically fucked this movie up and yeah. does better next time. Real quick, before we move on, because I know we got going, but th- the most insulting thing of all this, two things. One, the coolest part of the movie is when she's swinging on lightning. Anyone who says otherwise is an <laughs> idiot. Two, the sick-ass gold armor she gets was fucking marketing. I can't mm. believe how fucking easily... I was ready for her to pull that shit on and be like, do super cool stuff, and she doesn't. Fucking no, some... gets ripped off of Yeah, some media. random Jaguar woman rips off the fucking armor, <laughs> and it's over. It's just nothing. Yeah. Linda Carter comes back at the very end. She was the Wonder Woman from the 70s, so I told mm-hmm. my mom, I was like, hey, don't watch this movie, but the Wonder Woman you like might come back one day, so uh, it'll be cool. Nice. Yeah, terrible fucking movie. Yeah, I, don't... I don't even recommend, like, watching it I, <laughs> at all. If you're... This isn't one that you can watch and be like, you can't even hate watch this movie. It's I just, disagree. If, if you're very hungry, you'll like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready to get into Soul? I think we can do this one quicker. Yeah. Especially since we don't have the time to not do it quicker. <laughs> I had so many things to say about Wonder Woman. Okay, the numbers. Soul. 96 from the critics. It checks out. Did critics ever say anything bad about a Pixar movie? I don't think it's ever happened. Did, didn't the they not ones. like Toy Story 4? Was that just no, they, us? That was just us. <laughs> uh, audience, 88%. I'm giving it a 74. Wow. Okay. I'm giving it an 85. Okay. Worldwide gross made $57 million. Not that much. <sighs> but you got to keep in mind. You can't take your kids anywhere. I guess so that's, this is different from Wonder Woman. Yeah. Fuck. That sucks. Uh, opening weekend, $7.6 million. Still just bummy. Very bad. Yeah. And it's budget, $150 million. What are you making? So were these like brand new ghost models? <laughs> what the fuck was your? I don't I know. I understand that Pixar like 
their animation is like above and beyond every other animation studio in the world. Yeah. So like, they have to spend the money. But for like things with hair and are like trying a new technique for animation, I'm like, this makes sense. This was a blue blob for most of it. Yeah. And the rest of the time it was just I never was there was no point watching this movie and I watched it on a seventy five inch four K giant T V when I was like, Whoa crazy looking I yeah. Like, yeah it's a you know a cartoon i like the part where he was like on the fucking thing going to like the afterlife <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking like the weirdest shit i was like okay that's kind of cool i guess okay why don't you give us the fun facts i have one fun fact for this mostly because we're out of time and also kind of forgot we got busy <laughs> we were first uh pete doctor directed this he was also the director of inside out a movie I thought was stupid. <laughs> he's got a he's got a very niche kind of movie. Yeah, he's be making. He's trying to like get all fucking. Why, bro? Don't get introspective about like the afterlife and emotions. Like your dad, your dad's not mad at you because he has two angry fucking characters <laughs> in his head. Just, just stick to the Incredibles, where you're like you have to be a good hero and a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready to get into the takes. Yeah. Why, why did you give it an eighty five? Uh, it's a really well done movie. I have problems. Honestly, 85 is probably generous, but like this movie made me think in like a way that I initially was mad about. I was like, this is a stupid movie. I was like, why would you really like, I felt like fucking shit. And then I kind of like took some time to reflect on it. And I just think that this is the first Pixar movie I've watched in a long time where I've actually been like, this is it. Like I'm getting a decent thought process out of this. Like I understand this. Like, See, I, th- that's why mine is low. Because all of that may be true, not the right time for this. I agree. That's I also I, have it uh, written down. I uh, because the, the kind of the point of the movie is, is like twofold. One, it's like just enjoy your life. Just find a way to enjoy it. You don't need like a very. You don't need something like just. Yeah. Life is beautiful on its own. And two, find a spark. Find something that makes you happy, and then that can be a thing you focus on, but not too much. Yeah. Two things that I can't fucking do right now. <laughs> My spark is hanging out with people. I like people. And life being beautiful, really hard to do from inside all the fucking time. So go fuck yourself, Pixar. <laughs> Should have waited to release the movie. I fully Should've agree. have been when you get vaccinated, you get a free ticket to go see Soul. And I would have been yeah. like, oh, what a great way to re-enter life. It made, oh, I don't know. I felt like a different way because it made me like not be so obsessive about that. Because I don't know what my fucking spark is, but then like... I find myself being, this is getting deep, I find myself <laughs> getting so fucking obsessed with trying to fit, like, what the fuck is my passion, like, what am I obsessed with, and then, like, you kind of come to realize, like, I'm fucking obsessed with, like, having good friends and, like, living my life to a point where, like, I'm fucking, I could play guitar and do cool stuff, and, I don't know, like, quarantine sucks dick, don't get me wrong, but it's, <laughs> like, it's, this movie made me realize that, like, whenever Joe's behind the piano and he sees, like, the flashes of his life, like, it's not him fucking... You know, like oh, I won. I did jazz so well, and oh, it's all jazz. It's not all jazz. It's he's hanging out with his dad. He's going to the fucking park. He's riding his bike. He's just like these little fucking slivers of his life where you just like. I feel like that's every moment where he was cognizant in in his life and said, "Fuck, life's pretty good right now." Yeah, which I guess I have had a few of those in COVID, but yeah. I still not the <laughs> not right the time. fucking time. <laughs> I used to have a lot more of those. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, fuck, I heard. <laughs> that was, uh, like, half my points. What, what else I got? Uh, him being a cat, I, this, I, I, ha- I hate doing this because I don't like to critique something when I don't have how to make it better, and I don't know what else they should have done, but all I know is that him being the cat, when the second it happened in the movie, I was just like, dude, he can be a guy, he can be the little blue soul, he can't be a third thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Make him back to the soul. Make him, like, give him back his body, but don't. We don't there's too many Jesse, things. Jesse, that's like a good concept to be like, I don't have anything better. So that's like good for like yard work or like, it's just, just, <laughs> this is, that's not good for fucking art, dude. Of course you don't have anything better. I don't think you've sat on your fucking ass and been like, all right, so when you die, you become a little pillow man and you're going to convince other little pillow men who are actually babies to like stuff. Yeah. No, dude, gonna, him I, being a cat is fucking stupid. The second he <laughs> became a cat, I turned off the movie. I, I, I was like, I'm not watching this shit. And then the next day, me and Jesse had a conversation. I went and finished it. 
But uh, stop doing that shit. Stop making fuck. I, I yeah. don't care to watch him as a cat. I wanted to see him do cool jazz stuff or fucking. It I don't also know, have more does conversations. seem like Disney specifically does this to every black character they make. They're like, well, we can't let this character be black for more than oh, 15 minutes of the movie. This take is searing for the boy. <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. I got a last one. Uh, the end of this movie is dick. I'm sorry. I have to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe should have died. It's it's a weird, horrible lesson to teach that you can come back after dying. Mm. I think one hundred percent that it, when you, Joe gets that second chance, he should have said no. He should have been like, "No, nope, we're not doing this. Like this is it." I, he lived he lived his life, and he he came to terms with that and accepted it. And then they fucking gave him a second chance. Imagine some little fucking tot out there with a, with a someone passes away, maybe, and then the parents sit down and watch Disney Plus, and they're like, "Oh, maybe fucking." Manny the ghost fucking wrangler will let my dad come back. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about children watching this movie. I was, which I guess is the main target audience. That, that the worst part about that was that this movie can leave you with such a great fucking line of th- well, it's depressing if, you know, being I take it, but it can leave you with a line of thing you can kind of get into, but like after that it may be not fucking like it as much because Joe comes out and he smells the air and he's like, man, life's great. And I was like, bitch, of course you fucking think it's great. You died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I see you. That does make sense. This is going to be the most animated fucking. <laughs> yeah. Movie. It's getting hot. Yeah. No, but in general, uh, I would recommend watching this movie, even though it wasn't oh, yeah. my favorite and it made it bummed me. Maybe not during COVID. If if you are feeling mentally unwell right yeah. now, don't not right now. But uh, in general, it was it was an interesting look at how all of this, how all and just the way they handled the afterlife. I thought, was yeah, very cool. it's a scary thing to like tackle, and I felt like they definitely did it like appropriately. Like they made it like. They made it broad and vague enough to, you know, just be like, you know, yeah, maybe this could be a thing. But they also made it, like, not scary. Like, the, the end game with the portal where you go up and, you know, you're forever gone. It, they made that scary, which they shouldn't have. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, but, it's still, like, not he's scared because he's not ready. But, like, yeah. the other people are just happily going there. And it's not like... It, there's no major religion that it's following the creed of. So, like, you yeah. don't know what the forever place is. It was a bright white light, so it looked like it, it's probably a good thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, like, what the point I was trying to, like, I felt like they did that successfully where that made me think more. I was like, this is some weird, mm. like, more existential shit, which I did not get from Inside Out. I just, maybe I was just fucking did not care at all, but I watched Inside Out, I did not think about shit. I was like, this is a dumb movie. Mm. But I watched this movie, and I was like, fuck, dude, like, the, the thought of, like, these little fucking, like, pr- not even fucking, <laughs> these pre-pre-pre-cums. Yeah. <laughs> pre, 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 pre <laughs> Just, like, having to, like, figure out, like, what their personality is going to be like and then being like, you're going to have anxiety. You're going to have a megalomania complex. You're going to have a god complex. I was like, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Great concept. It yeah. need to be a cat. <laughs> that's, he did, that's, the yeah. end, that's the end of my review. <laughs> Good concept, bad cat. <laughs> didn't mean. To, didn't need to be. Didn't need to be Garfield. Should have died at the end. Uh yeah, but that's it. Yeah, that's what we got. <laughs> my God, we we had twenty minutes of Wonder Woman to hate. Is this yeah. episode? I'm excited to listen back to this episode. It's gonna be a fuckload of. It's just gonna be like constant yelling out of nowhere. Okay, All well, right. tune in next week to watch our from the ground up. We'll see what that's about. All right. Thank you for listening.